Hey everyone, Shane B. Murray from The Weather Report. Thanks for joining me for this video uh, podcast series on uh, venues. And uh, today I'm with Tanya and she's with in, in uh, uh, with Beckenridge in Dallas, Oregon. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, tell me about yourself, about your business and where you guys are at and your website, all that good stuff. Okay, great. Yeah, my name is Tanya and um, we are the third owners of this vineyard. It was planted 50 years ago. And it has been a wedding venue for the last tw almost 25 years. So we are the second owners of the wedding venue. Wow. And we um, found this beautiful property in January of 2020, not knowing what the future looked like. And <laughs> right, right in. before the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So be between my husband and I, we have 10 kids. And... Um, Four of our sons were in dead-end jobs. In, they were in their 20s, dead-end jobs, wanting to buy houses for their families, but couldn't afford it. We were in Portland area. Yeah. And so um, I, I'm also an interior designer, and I was doing searching for my sons for houses and came across Dallas, and it was very affordable. And as I was looking through the list, Beckenridge popped up. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And so I, I, when I finished the computer looking, I went out to my husband and said, let's go for a drive tomorrow. And it was a icy day in January. We drove the 60 miles to get here and got on this property and fell in love. Nice. So we, we put together a business plan for our kids. We did all of our due diligence, put together a business plan and presented it to our kids. And seven of the kids moved to Dallas with us. Wow. So we, we started a family business. Um, there's actually three aspects to our business, the vineyard. We also have a tasting room and the wedding business. Gotcha. The wedding business is what supports everything. So yeah. the other two are just mostly for networking is the tasting room. And of course the vineyard, we will be making, this was our first year to make wine. So nice, nice. Uh, yeah. So um, we, as far as our, do you want me to explain our process as far as what yeah, we do with me, weddings? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Tell okay. Me what, yeah. Okay. So, well, I don't even have to tell the 2020 story because we all know, <laughs> we all know the road we all know what happened there. there yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so during that time, we we incorporated what we called the small wedding package, gotcha. and we uh, we did any existing bookings. We did the wedding for free, and wow. and um. They, you know, because when we bought the property, there were some, the previous owner didn't do the business the way we do it. We're all inclusive. So we were able to offer a package if they wanted, otherwise they could do a small wedding. Sure. Um, we continued to do that small wedding package after COVID because there are quite a few couples still in this day and age that are going, wait, I really don't need to have all those people at my wedding. You know, I, I think COVID kind of gave us an idea of who the important people are in our lives and priorities financially and all of that. So that's mm -hmm. really a good thing. Although from the wedding aspect, it means less profit. So, sure. you yeah. know, that's where, you know, we have to weigh it. So our package has changed a few times. Now we have a minimum for the package and um, the minimum. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. So um, okay, yeah, sure. our minimum for the small wedding package, they don't have to pay a venue fee. They have the venue for four hours. They're welcome to spend $200 an hour to rent more, you know, add more hours. Mm -hmm. um, it starts at $5,000 for up to 50 people. That includes um, their catering. It includes all their decor, including table or floor, well, simple floral arrangements. Mm -hmm. It includes the bride's bouquet, the groom's boutonniere. Um, it also includes the officiant. And the wedding cake. Wow. So they're getting they're getting a lot for their money. It doesn't include any bar service. It doesn't include the servers. They would have to pay extra for that. Sure. And we have an a la carte price listing that lists all of the extras that they can add. Um, the thing that we've seen with most couples since COVID, there's a few that will do that package. And then, of course, they add thousands of dollars to it because mm -hmm. they want more floral and everything. Um, but many couples are going, wait, we want to have 75 people or a hundred. And so then they flip over to our other package. Um, our other package is called the extravagant package. 
and it basically is all inclusive. They do need to rent the venue. So we do have a venue fee, but they have the venue for some couples will or brides will come at 8 a.m. and then the closeout right. time at 10 p.m. Um, but what it includes the same things the small wedded, wedding package does. Although it also includes um, their wedding invitations because one of our daughters is a graphic designer. Nice. Um, and it includes um, extras that she could do for them, like special welcome signs. And if they have um, a photo booth, you know, sign for that, for their catering. So Kelsey does um, that. Then also Alora, another daughter is a floral designer and decor specialist. So she, um, she does all of that and they're welcome to use any of our accessories that we have um, mm -hmm. with that package. So mm -hmm. it's, and so they're open. They, the add-ons would be if they want floral on the arch, mm -hmm. if they want to add barrel arrangements, things like that, but they can, it's all inclusive. So that is $7,000 up to 75 people. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, it includes catering cake that includes the bar fee and includes the serving fee. It wow. does not include alcohol, obviously, yeah, yeah. but it that's, does. That's much more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it does include like iced tea and coffee and water yeah. service. Yeah. Um, so the challenge with the pricing on that has been the catering mostly. So our, we have two caterers that we work with the most and, mm -hmm. um, our, our catering price only is $25 that's included in the package. So if they want to get salmon or steak, they're going to have to pay extra for that. Sure. Yeah. But we do have the two caterers that have provided a menu that fits within that, that budget. budget range. Yeah, yeah. So, which is nice. And a lot of couples will add appetizers and, you know, yeah. a lot of other things. Yeah. So, but it's a good starting point for couples. And I think um, what I'm seeing now, the trend um, recently with the inquiries has been, we want to stay within $15,000. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of the number I'm hearing. Obviously that's the starting point for them because once they fall in love with something, they will spend more money over the sure. period of the year or two to, per, that we plan. So, um, but that's, that's what we came up with it. We had price changes three times with that package. Initially it was a per person price. Mm -hmm. And that actually we had four or five changes. So that price went up twice because we realized that we couldn't afford to pay our staff with yeah. the first price. Right. <laughs> and then, and yeah. then we went up because catering went up. So we kind of landed on this price um, and it's working for us. So good. good. Uh, the process of the package is um, we'll get an inquiry. I'll do a tour with the couple um, I'm a real no pressure salesperson, you know, I'll, I'll go through everything with them uh, during the tour. We walk around the property. Um, obviously, you know, ask all the questions that we want to know. And so we can address those in the sale. Mm -hmm. Um, but rarely do I sign people on the spot. I usually say, go home, think about this, look at the package. Um, and, you know, if you could let me know in the next week, if they have a date, I'll hold the date for a week without a fee. Yeah, okay. And nice. um, I would say out of 10 tours, nine will book with us. That's fantastic. So it's a really good percentage. Yeah, yeah that's a great percentage. Um, and then about 75% of our couples are destination couples, which means they're traveling at least 500 miles to be really? at the wedding here. So we are, we had a, a couple last weekend from Florida. Wow. They came all the way across the United States to have a wedding here. Wow. So that was really fun to, you know, serve them in an environment that they're not used to and their guests. Are you, so. are you finding that those out of town people are, have family and stuff in the area or they just fell in love with that part of Oregon and that they want to come and have a wedding there? You know, it's about 50, 50. This last weekend, the bride had gone to college here. Oh, nice. So she was familiar with this area, but had no friends or family living here currently. Mm -hmm. So everyone traveled um, from the East Coast to get wow. here. That's awesome. So um, there are some people that they have, you know, an aunt or uncle that lived there or the parents moved here or something. Yeah. But it's rare. I would say most most of the couples don't have family um, or friends. 
they've just visited on vacation maybe and fell in love and yeah. and then decided to They're do like, it. Hey, we're going there. <laughs> yeah. So the process after they do commit um, and they can commit online, they can send me the contract um, via email. All of our payments are done through QuickBooks online currently. Nice. So I will bill them. They, it's a 50% deposit to hold their date. And um, then if they're getting the package, which like I said, most of them do, within that first month, we schedule something we called a vision meeting. And so if the couple are local, they they come to the event center and right. we sit down with them. Um, we go on their, Alora and Kelsey and I sit down with our computers, go on their Pinterest page or any other information they have. Mm -hmm. And um, if they are not local, we'll do a Zoom call with them. Yeah. And and so, and we can pull the Pinterest up and ask the questions just like you can, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. luckily, luckily technology works that way, right? You can just- Yeah, get yeah. Yeah, awesome. So, so we do that vision meeting and within two weeks after the vision meeting, they receive a vision board that we've come up with. And um, from that meeting, and Alora does the vision board and then Kelsey comes up with two or three invitation designs. Nice. And um, we send that to them. And, you know, I do a follow-up obviously, see what their thoughts are, if they need to make any changes. Yeah. And then from there, they receive something called a package fee agreement. That includes everything that we've yeah. showed them in the package that they're happy with. Yeah. Um, as far as payments go, um, the second installment for the venue is six months before the wedding. And the the down payment for the package is at that time, six months before the wedding. And that's 50% of the package price. Gotcha. So um, that if they're booking a year in advance, that gives them time, obviously, to yeah. come up with that. Although we get quite a few couples that are two to six months out. So, you know, that changes, obviously. Especially right now, right? You, there's a lot of yeah. backlog, I think, from people that, yeah. you know, put things off during COVID. So, Absolutely. so they book with you and they give you a deposit, which is a 50% of the initial fee. Then yeah. you do a consultation to figure out kind of what it is they want and maybe some add-ons and kind of get everything together, exactly what they want. Yes. And then from that, there's, they need to provide an additional payment within six months of the wedding to, to balance that. And then the final payments due a month before. Well, what we do is we have another meeting we call the two month meeting. Oh, okay. So, so we sit down with them again at two months. It's usually just to Laura and I, because Kelsey's done all of her stuff. And um, we go back through with a fine tooth comb, all of the details of their wedding, see if they want to add anything um or take away something sure. uh and then we do the day of schedule and we do a floor plan at that time and um you know talk all those details of the day and yeah. and so we're on the same page and at that time they owe 50 percent of the balance so it's basically the 25 percent of what that yeah, package sure, sure. and then we wait until the final head count at three weeks to collect that final amount yeah. um and that was because we learned the hard way when I collected money. And then with COVID, mm -hmm. the guest count went down by 50 people. And it's like, okay, now I owe them money. Yeah, yeah, so, right. <laughs> yeah so, so it's fine if we do it three weeks before. So yeah. That's so good. That, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you said, we were talking earlier, you, you guys have a minimum now, right? Um, right. On the venue, which, which is probably smart. Uh, why did you guys decide to do that? What happened that made you decide to go with a minimum? Uh, because we weren't making money. So the minimum, it's $7,000 for the package. Uh, and that is a maximum of 75 people for 7,000. After gotcha. that, after that, it's um, $100 a person. So, um, you know, for those weddings that are adding 25 to get to 100, that yeah, covers yeah. the cost. Yeah, good. But yeah, we found um, our, you know, we're family owned and operated. We have five kids that are on salary. And um, then we hire also a couple of high schoolers and a cleaning person at the end of the event. And we just, for yeah. if we were just charging the 95 a person, we weren't making I got you. ends meet. Makes so, sense. Well, then you have yeah. utilities and you have taxes right. and you, <laughs> right? Right. And yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 And so, and so basically, you know, there, we do get some profit after expenses on that 
package. Yeah. Most of our profit comes from the venue fee because, um, you know, we're, that is where we're paying for the electricity and all of that stuff yeah, yeah. is it's yeah, the venue sure. fee as well as the landscaping, keeping up, you know, all of those details. So yeah, you do, you have landscaping. I mean, especially there, right. You got to cut the grass and trim the trees and, you know, yeah, it's cut. We have a son who's our landscape specialist. Well, and he, <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> works five helps. days, a week, but he's on salary. So, you know, he, he works he's hard. Pay and for then, him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, and then the other two sons are the, the vineyard managers. So they work out in the vineyard mostly, but like right now they're making wood tables for events because mm -hmm. we've had requests for wood tables. So nice. the guys are out right now in the yeah. shop making right wood tables. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I was just I was interviewing someone else recently and they were talking about um, they had their initial setup was metal chairs because that's what they had. Right. Right. But what they found was, is uh, because the area is kind of outdoors and it's beautiful, they created these wood benches. For yeah. To sit yeah. On for the venue, you know, for the ceremony itself. And um, uh, I said, yeah, that probably turned out well. And so they were they were in the process of doing the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice to have a crew that can do that or family yeah. member. Yeah, for sure. Like. Uh do you guys have um around you is there places for hotels and stuff and people for people to stay or do you guys have spot on site for people to stay? I wish we had something on site. I think that would be a huge selling factor. We um we are 20 miles from Salem, which is the capital of of Oregon and about 70 miles from Portland. Okay. So um, there in our little town here, um, there is a hotel that we never recommend, but people will stay there, you know, yeah. uh, it's okay. But there's a little town about eight miles from here called Independence. And um, they opened their door right about the time we signed our paperwork. Oh, wow. And they're a beautiful hotel right on the Willamette River. They have a rooftop terrace for, you know, cocktail hours and they have a nice restaurant. So we highly recommend couples use them nice. right and on. then, you know, or they can travel the 20 miles to go to Salem. So most of our couples do the independence hotel. Right on. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, the vineyard, you guys have tasting rooms, stuff like that. Do you guys incorporate that in, in any of the weekend events or for, for the couples? Oh, you mean dur during their wedding? Or, or yeah, during the wedding or before, like a before party or or lunch after, you know, kind of a brunch the day after. Yeah, they can. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, last weekend the the destination wedding we did the rehearsal dinner. Nice. So, um, and the way that we work because this is our first season of making our own wine, and it won't be ready for a year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have a a liquor license that covers um, wine, beer, and cider that we don't make. Once you become a winery, you can only serve your own. Oh, okay. So our our um, when we moved here, we opened a tasting room called Radius Tasting Room, downtown Dallas, and we serve the fifteen local vineyards of the Dallas area, as well as the local cider and the brewer in, okay. in local. So so when they come to our tasting room, they can taste anything in this area that oh, we that's carry. Nice. Yeah, tonight we have an event. It's a live music event. It's with the tasting room, and um, we have some featured vineyards, but we do have you know the other vineyards sure. here. Yeah. So when we do the um, weddings or the rehearsal dinner or whatever they they want to do, um, it always includes the radius serving. So it's not Beckenridge serving; it's radius. So even though we're the same LLC, it's their yeah. own entity. Sure. You know, doing business as. Yeah. Um, so that's worked really well for us. We probably won't be a winery for another two years. Okay. So, um, so we're going to continue this business. Does know. that limit you though? If you're going to become a winery in two years, like you said, um, once you get your, once you become a winery, you have to serve your own wine versus right. what you guys are doing now serving around you. Yeah. We give up that license. We have to exchange it for a winery license. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So, so that's, That'll be a little sad, but we'll have our own selection, which will be yeah. nice yeah. at that time. I mean, do you think that'll be an advantage for you guys? I mean, it sounds like if you if you can come up with some really good wine, it might be. Oh, we will because we have one of the <laughs> our um, Pinot Block, Pinot Noir Block, is one of six oldest Pinot vineyards in Dallas. 
Wow. So, um, and the previous owners sold it and they could sell it for a really high price because it's, you know, they're very seasoned vines. And so they also um, were planted straight from France. So they're not grafted at all. So they're okay. very special. Um, so we, yeah, we will come up with some good varieties The I really, it will make me a little bit sad because the radius concept has worked very well for us, especially when we do concerts and things like that. Yeah. So, um, so that will be a little, uh, disappointing, but it will be great to have our own yeah. too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you were doing, uh, the tasting room and that is downtown. That's a separate business. It was, um, we actually closed the doors over the summer and moved it up here. Oh, okay. So now, now it's called radius tasting and events. So we just focus on doing special events up here. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Um, let's talk a little bit about preferred vendors. Um, are, you know, do you guys have a set of preferred vendors? What do you kind of go through to make sure you get them on your list? I know a lot of the work comes from you, from the family, but you know, if photographers outside or, you know, planners outside or whatever, what are you guys doing to make sure that they qualify? I mean, how are you vetting them? What, what are you guys doing there? Well, we belong to an organization called the Willamette Valley Wedding Professionals. So we are a group that networks um, monthly, you know, newsletters, things like that. So some of our vendors have come through the network, which was nice. great. Um, but I think throughout the years, you know, we, the couples have to hire their photographer and DJ separate. Mm -hmm. So um, we've grown our list if we like that vendor. So, yeah. you know, there's some DJs I would never put on our list and we have taken some photographers off or never added them. Same with catering. You know, yeah. we, um, we have our two preferred caterers that they don't have to use, you know, their allocation for their food can go to another caterer. Um, but the, out of the probably 10 that have been brought in, only one is on our list I got you. because the other ones, um, you know, either they didn't work well with us, you know, they, because our concept is so different um, or they, the food wasn't good yeah. or they left a huge mess at the end of the night, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, so that's how we've come up with our list, but we always are adding to it, which is good for our couples. We just updated it a couple of weeks ago. So. Good, good, good. Yeah. That's, I think it's important to have a list of mm -hmm. people you would recommend. <laughs> Cause you yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And asking, it's nice, right? Well, and it's nice because, you know, when we do that vision meeting, we ask the couple, you know, what type of reception do you envision? Do you envision a party? You know, do you want your DJ right. to be, Different, you know, different. be this party leader, or do you want a more mellow DJ yeah. that's going to give you, you know, just more background music and slow dancing. And so we ask those questions and then refer them to who we think they would match well with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that helps too. As far as like vendors, like our bakery, we only have one baker that we use. Um, we did have a couple that wanted a special cake that our baker doesn't offer so we we sourced one and it was a lot more expensive so they did have to pay yeah. pay um, more for that but um we found a, a vendor that fits right into our budget so that's great very fantastic. Fast yeah fantastic mm -hmm. tanya my last question for you is if you had to go back three to five years what would you tell yourself <laughs> <laughs> my husband and i joke all the time <laughs> because well because you know when we bought so um, you know, we, we go back and forth and go, what do we get into? But at the same time, we have met so many wonderful people in this business and living in this community that we wouldn't want to go back and change anything. We, yeah. we love it. I think, um, with it, he and I both have been owned multiple businesses throughout our career. Mm -hmm. And, um, we know that the first three to five years are the most difficult. So we were prepared and we prepared our family for that. We prepared um, our family that there wouldn't be a lot of extra money. We all are going to be living lean for the first five years. So we were prepared that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I don't think we'd change anything that way. Although I think we with us, we might've been a little bit more diligent on the property we bought you know, because there's been some surprises and the equipment yeah. and things like that, you yeah. know, it's cost a lot more for us for upkeep. 
than we thought it would be. So, um, but as far as getting into the business, you know, we, we really are enjoying it. So, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Right on. All right. Well, thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate your time today. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.